Hey everyone, I'm here with Randall from uh, Catalyst Game Labs and we're going to talk about Balance of Power. Um, do you mind just giving us a, a little overview of the game? Uh, Balance of Power is, I like to call it, if you like the concept of risk but never really like the execution of it necessarily, uh, then there's a good chance that Balance of Power is going to be for you. Um, it's, uh, the setting of it is uh, in 1815, right after Napoleon has been deposed, uh, and the various countries of Europe are vying for power. Um, the setup and how it works is actually nice and simple. Okay? It's basically a rock, paper, scissors situation. So you have three different types of pieces. You have your banker, your general, and your king. The king can only eliminate the banker, the banker can only eliminate the general, and the general can only eliminate the king. Okay? So each turn during play, you're going to have three actions. A king action, a general action, and a banker action. And then within those actions, you can either move to one spot, okay? You can duplicate, which would be to replicate yourself, or you can attack. That would be to move into here. Now, the banker here is going to move in, and he can, in fact, kill the general. Okay, so that could be one of my moves. But on the very next turn, because that's the Prussians' turn, on the very next turn, the French could immediately come and strike back because the king can kill the general. So one of the great things about the game is there's a, you know, I hate to say it, it's, you know, a balance of power, haha. Uh, but you do have to have this very good balance of making sure that you have multiple levels of defense. Um, if, you if one of your plane pieces um, is fully eliminated, um, pretty much game over at that point. So you got to be very careful in, in making sure that all of your borders have a selection of all three pieces. Um, so uh, literally two of the last rules that are involved is one, if you have, if you're the only one with plain pieces in each one of your territories, um, then you're gonna get what's called achieving empire. And achieving empire will give you a fourth bonus move. Meaning for any one of your general banker kings, you can replicate, you can uh, move, or you can attack. And that's a really powerful element. And then the last bit is you can never have more than three pieces in a location. So if you're gonna replicate in this, I couldn't do that, I'd have to move one of him out. If you're going to attack into a location, that's actually fine because you'd be eliminating the appropriate piece and that would leave you with three in that location, okay? And then the way you win the game is it's based upon the number of people that you have. Each territory that you solely control is one point. And then in your capital, if you have one each of the three types of pieces in there, that's an additional three points. So for example, if you're playing a six player game and you have Empire, then you have 12 points automatically and then it's 18 points to win. So you only got six more points to go. Okay. Uh, and that may not seem like very much, but when you have six players and they're all constantly you know, vying for you and if somebody kind of starts to run away with it, then others that hadn't even been paying attention to you are suddenly going to be coming in and nipping at your flanks because they know that if you get too far ahead, you're going to win. So it's it's just it's wonderfully simple. We were up at the Geek Chic table. Giant shout out to the Geek Chic guys. We love them. Uh, we were up at the Geek Chic room and we played two games between like nine and one. And in both games, we were teaching additional people to play, and they were both six players. So it can be quite quick. Uh, and every time I've played it there's some new strategy to try it out. It's a great game. Great, uh, so it looks like there's ability for six players to play. Um, how, is there certain factions, like say I only have two or three of us, what, are there certain factions that you have to use or can you start with any? Well, there, there are guys, well, it is a two player game. It's certainly not as good as three and above. Um, I've played multiple two-player games. They, they can be fun, but it definitely doesn't have quite as smooth a feel. Generally, the guidelines are, if you are playing lower numbers, that you should start out grouped together. Okay. Um, so yeah, if, if we have three players and I'm doing the French and the British, and suddenly somebody else over here is doing the Ottomans, you know, they're gonna be able to run away with things. You really do need to start grouped together. Great, um, and is this, I know it's available here at the show. Yeah, um, it, it actually just released here at the show. It's also available for pre-order uh, on CatalystGameLabs.com. Uh, and also, uh, it'll be available 
kind of hedging my bets maybe end of July, beginning of August in stores. Okay, great. Um, do you have any plans to possibly make a, a digital version of this game? Uh, well, there's all, I would love to make a digital version. I think this would do wonderful. We don't have any immediate plans. Uh, we actually have another board game that's in development uh, called Linear. Uh, and that one actually we're working with a company called Jackson Maynard and they're doing an app for that game. Uh, and so hopefully that'll be the start of a you know good long process. So if you want to check that out, it's linear and they have a Facebook page. Uh, and if that does well, then they're, they've already looked up Balance of Power and they think that they would love to dive into that as well. Great. Well, thank you for sharing this with me. It looks like a, a really fun game. Thanks for having me on. Thank you.